Excellencies, good evening. Excellencies, friends, brothers, and sisters. Uh, I thought uh, there wasn't going to be yet another speech, but uh, some people insisted that I do that, and I'm happy to do that by uh, welcoming you once again uh, to our country, Rwanda. I hope by now you feel at home and already planning your next visit. <laughs> Even uh, if I have to say something that involves politics, I, I'll try to do it in a way that uh, it keeps you relaxed for this evening. I have no doubt that we have had a productive day. Now is the time to relax for a few moments and enjoy each other's company. I would like to reiterate our thanks to fellow leaders of member states and the commission for the honor of hosting this summit in our capital. And um, I would like to say that uh, we've never had to be taught to feel like Africans. It is effortless and natural. The common notes in our respective histories allow us to easily understand each other's experience despite barriers of time and distance. Each of us here can enter a homestead anywhere in Africa and be welcomed and embraced in a family and familiar way. The gestures one makes to convey respect and appreciation to the hosts will be immediately understood as such. Even without understanding a word of what is said, we Africans feel at home with each other. Unity is the prerequisite for prosperity, as much as it is for peace. We have often come together as Africans to face injustices. The dividend of liberation should be great improvements in well-being for all Africans, not the pursuit of uh, national interests to the exclusion of others. Whatever any country can do alone can be attained faster, better, and more safely by working together. We must also take responsibility for the corrosive cynicism that pervades discussions about Africa, even among our own and young people. For centuries, the minds of Africans were warped into the most effective instruments of our own oppression, more punishing 
than any whip. No institution can long withstand the scorn of the very people it is meant to serve. But for us today, history is no excuse for refusing to see all that is good about Africa and ourselves. The positive changes in most places are undeniable. We still have a long way to go, but we have not been doing nothing. Only it has not been enough. What is more important is to keep working to make the necessary changes to make our national and continental institutions better. Indeed, looking around the world today, Africa does not look any less prepared to face the new dangers affecting every region of the globe. Let's raise Africa by affirming what has been done and using every success to set our sights even higher, making sure that the political will often displayed is turned into tangible results. This is the dignity that we have struggled to reclaim as Africans. And in Rwanda, we have, we call it Agachiro. We could not be any happier to have you in Ikigali to celebrate our friendship and our activities for the development of our continent together. <laughs> May I now uh, request that uh, we find our glasses and uh, you join me in a toast, uh, stressing the unity of our Africa. Thank you. I think I have to walk back for my glass, if you don't mind. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Merci.